Shalom, shalom to all of my family and friends who tune in to these teachings. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. And let's just go to Yah to just bless him and praise him and worship him and invite his Ruach to teach us tonight. Abba, we thank you for your loving kindness. We thank you for your tender mercies. We also thank you that you are slow to anger, but rich in grace and truth. We thank you that we have been accepted in the, in the beloved. And we thank you for, for all that you do on our behalf. Thank you for loving us, Abba. And we ask that you will pour out your Ruach on everyone who clicks play on this uh, teaching, that you may give them uh, revelation and understanding of what your word says and how much you love us and want to, and want to teach us uh, all that all that we are learning and all that you have in store for us so that we can be prosperous as your servant Johanan John said that we will be prosperous and in health even as our souls prospers in Yahusha's name giving give us hearing ears seeing eyes and receptive hearts in Yahusha's mighty, mighty name. Okay, shalom again. And so we're going to go ahead and get started. Don't have anybody up here and you don't, uh, you know, we're just going to go. It may be a just a recording that I will post. Okay, so let's just share and get to it. All righty. Okay, so this is our final teaching on uh, Yah's plans for wellness and health. And so we're we are we hope that you learned some things. And and um, I remember saying in one of the parts that we were doing that you know uh, some things may be hard to swallow but we've got to trust Yah. We've got to trust him that he knows what best for us, what's best for us. He made our bodies and he knows what will make us sick and what will keep us well. And so that we'll have a healthy life. Hallelujah. All right, so let's move on. And we're gonna do the names. This is a shortened lesson. So we're going to do the names here and ter terminology and then get right into the lesson. All right. In case you forgot it over, over the break, uh, Yahuwah, I am that I am, or I will be that I will be. And then we have El Yahuwah, which is translated into Lord God. Then we have Yah, his, the shortened name of his name, and that's I am. Yahuwah Elohai, the Lord my God, and Yahuwah Elohai knew the Lord our God. Yahuwah Elohai Ka, the Lord your God, and then we also call him the Most High, and the name and the uh, name for that is El El Yon E L. And then the second part, E L Y O N, L L Y O N, the Most High. Okay. And then we have Yahusha, uh, which means Yah is salvation, whom we have previously called uh, Jesus. And then we have Yahusha Hamashiach, uh, which means salvation in the Messiah, whom we have previously called Jesus Christ. All right, and uh, continuing names and terminology, uh, Ruach Elohim, breath of God, and that is pronounced Elohim and not Elohim, is Elohim. I has an E sound in Hebrew, okay? And it means breath of God. Um, what did I do? Okay, then, and then we have Ruach HaKodesh, 
which means, which we have formally called Holy Ghost or Holy Spirit. He is not a ghost. He is not, um, he is not a spirit. He is the spirit or the breath of our Yah, our Yah. And Ruach means breath. Ruach Yahuwah is the breath of Yah or the spirit of Yah. Uh, Ruach Hamashiach, that is pronounced Hamashiach. And that is the breath of the Messiah or the breath of Christ. And then we have Yasharal, which is, and it is pronounced two different ways, Yasharal, then Yasharal, which is uh, translated from, uh, transla the, it, the word Israel is translated from. Okay, so let's look at the review view of previous studies. Uh, and this is a, a scripture that we have of, of, uh, uh, reviewed for every lesson part uh, of the wellness and healing of this wellness and healing teacher, Yah's plan, Exodus 15. And there's, there's a lot to unload in there. And uh, so we have tried to unload most of it, but let's go over it again. Uh, verse 25, and he cried unto Yahweh, and this is uh, Moses, cried unto Yahuwah, and Yahweh showed him a tree, which when he had cast into the waters, the waters were made sweet. There he made for them a statue and an ordinance, and there he proved them. Yahuwah showed Moses that what to do when they were in danger of getting sick or even dying of thirst, the body's getting totally dehydrated and then maybe death, and how to keep uh, the children of Yasharal from getting sick. So Yahuwah, his eyes are always upon us and he knows what will uh, keep us from getting sick and he will intervene uh, if we want him to. If we want him to, he is not going to try to overtake our will or override our will. So that that is um, uh, that's important for us to know. We make our own decisions, and uh, whatever decisions we make, then the consequences are ours. That is how our Abba parents, and and uh, you know, it's what we learn. Uh, when we have adult children, we allow them to make, we allow them to make their own decisions. Uh, when we have adult children, we allow them to make their own decisions. So the consequences will be theirs. The consequences will be theirs. Okay. Uh, so Yahweh showed Moses what to do. And Moses was obedient and he did it. And uh, the waters became sweet. And in verse 26, Yahuwah said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah Elohai King and will do that which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahuwah Rophaka that heals you, all right? So he's saying, I'm the one that heals you. I'm the one that heals you, but if you're not gonna obey what I have told you, then you're gonna get the same sicknesses that were on the Egyptians, okay? But I'm the one, he says, I'm the one that heals you. And then Yahuwah gives his people the conditions that he requires of us so that we will be healthy and well. All right, so let's move on. Um, Leviticus 18, and Yahuwah spoke unto Moshe saying, speak unto the children of Yasharah and say unto them, I am Yahuwah Elohai Kim, or I am the Lord your God. After the doings of the land of Egypt, where when you dwelt, shall you not do 
And after the doings of the land of Canaan, whether I bring you, shall you not do, neither shall you walk in their ordinances. So, so what is he really saying? Don't do what the Gentiles do. Obey my law, statutes, commands, and ordinances. Obey me, not do what they do or do what they say do. And verse four, you shall do my judgments and keep my ordinances to walk therein. I am Yahuwah Elohim, and you shall therefore keep my statutes and my judgments, which, listen, if a man do, he shall live in them. I am Yahuwah. Okay. Now let's let's do today's excuse me this week's lesson and uh, then we're going to be done because uh I'm not going to add to y'all's uh word or take away from it if you have questions then I'll be happy to answer if I can or just do research or you can you can actually pray to him yourself you're his child all right, Levit Leviticus 11, we're starting at verse 29 tonight. These also shall be unclean to you. Now, we've already gone uh, through all of uh, the animals uh, uh, that we are not supposed to eat, that are not considered food, uh, which is, uh, you know, the birds that are not considered food. And the uh, things that swim in the ocean that are not considered as food. We've all gone over that. And it, it's going to be your decision. And I also brought to you what eating those things will do to your body. Okay. What it will do. And, uh, you know, I talked with someone uh, this past weekend. And every time I've talked with that person, uh, they live in Virginia. They've they've had something port like, and uh, and uh, and they and they are not doing well as far as their physical health. Okay, they've they've had swine, and we are commanded not to eat swine. Okay, so back to the scripture, verse twenty nine. These also shall be unclean unto you among the creeping things that creep. Uh, upon the earth, the weasel and the mouse and the tortoise after his kind. Now, the tortoise is, is, is another name for the turtle. And I do know that where I'm from, they ate turtle. Uh, it, it, it was a delicacy to them. In fact, uh, Monique's godparents, the guy, he ate, he, he ate turtle. I, I remember seeing him, uh, have this huge turtle and he had him, uh, uh, confined. And I guess he says he's cleaning them out or whatever. I don't know. And, and I went, uh, we were at his house on a Sunday and I, I think it was about a Wednesday when he decided to, I don't know how he skinned it or got him out of the shell, but that meat is uh, yucky looking to me. It's very white and translucent. And he loved, he loved eating that turtle, but we are not supposed to eat any of those things. Okay. Uh, verse 30, and the ferret and the chameleon, and all of us have seen chameleons because sometimes they will either be crawling on your porch or steps and uh, and uh, or sometimes they will get in your house and they change colors according to the season. So if it's fall, they'll be brown. If it's spring, they'll be green. Um, and also the lizard, we are not supposed to eat them and the snail and the mole. And and Mozart usually live underground. They they uh, uh and I have never actually, even though I grew up in the country, I've never actually seen a live mo. Uh, so snails make up 
a French dish, which is supposed to be a delicacy called escargot. So I just thought I would throw that in there in case you ever went to a French restaurant and it has escargot on the menu. Those are snails. And they put, it in, put them in some kind of garlic sauce. They're really kind of a giant snail-like because the snails that crawl around in our yard and garden, they are so small. But uh, but escargot is those snails and some kind of butter garlic sauce. And, and uh, so just know that, that they are, are not to be eating in verse 30, eaten in verse 31. These are unclean to you. Among all that creep, whosoever doth touch them, touch them, when they be dead, shall be unclean until the even. even. And it's also, that is said about uh, uh, swine and some of the other animals that we are not even supposed to touch, and yet we put them in our bodies. But don't shoot me, shoot, I'm the messenger, but I'm just telling you what the word of Yah says for our health and wellness, okay? All right, let's move on. Verse 41, this is in Le Leviticus 11 also. Verse 41, and every creeping thing that creep upon the earth, listen, hear me now shall be an abomination it shall not be eaten so so whatever we were talking about on the last slide and then verse 42 whatsoever goes upon the belly now we know that in some parts of the of the country the united states a lot of people eat snakes they uh in some restaurants uh serve rattlesnake or some other uh, most of the time it's rattlesnake and i i just i just can't imagine in my personal experience um uh when i went to denver uh and uh a, a minister friend of mine we went to denver and her cousin decided to take us out to dinner and they took us to a restaurant and I believe it was called Pompadour's or something like that, but they didn't serve normal food. They served shark and uh, things that you're not supposed to. Every, in fact, everything on the menu was just about what Yah had commanded us that is an abomination. But they had rattlesnake, oh wow. They had turtle, shark bites and some of them. And I couldn't eat a thing. I mean, my stomach was already queasy just looking at the menu. So uh, the next night, uh, the uh, my my uh, travel uh, friend, she her her, her cousin uh, said, I told whatever her name was, I've forgotten now. It's been years. Whatever her name is, they didn't want to eat that stuff, and uh, and so the only thing I had was green beans. And I have a feeling that it was something that I wasn't supposed to eat in those green beans. But anyway, I got through it and uh, and uh, they took us to a uh, uh, food bar cafeteria where we could tell what that it was just normal uh, American cuisine. All right. So whatsoever goes upon the belly and whatsoever goes upon all four or whatsoever has more feet among all creeping things that creep upon the earth. So that's kind of like the uh, caterpillar and uh, the millipedes and centipedes and all of those worms and stuff we are not to eat. And I'm sure people, some people somewhere on the earth eat them, but we are not to eat. And he said, and it says, them you shall not eat, for they are an abomination. Verse 43, you shall not make yourselves abominable with any creeping thing that creeps. Now, this is this is something that kind of caught my catches my attention. If you eat those things, then you'll be abominable. 
with it, all the creeping things that creep. And it says, neither shall you make yourselves unclean with them, that you should be defiled thereby. So here is Yah, our Abba, uh, talking, uh, uh, talking about how we can defile our own bodies. Well, what defiles our bodies? Sickness and disease. When we'll be defiled, if we eat what he said not to eat, we defile our bodies. And, uh, and uh, we put unclean things, things that Yah considers as an abomination into our bodies. And so our bodies eventually start breaking down because we are not even to touch these things, but, but especially not to eat them. Okay, all righty. Leviticus 17, verse 10. And whatsoever man there be of the house of Israel. This is a, this is, this is a, a different, a little bit different from Leviticus 11. And whatsoever man there be of the house of, of Yasharal or of the strangers that sojourn among you, that eats any manner of blood. I will even set my face against that soul that eats blood and will cut him off from among his people. So, so uh, he's telling us that we are not to eat blood. Uh, verse 11, for the, and why? because the life of the flesh is in the blood. And I have given it to you upon the altar to make an atonement for your souls, for it is the blood that makes an atonement for your soul, for your soul. Now, uh, uh, I don't know if you ever heard of this, but a lot of times those occult uh, groups uh, their, their, what part of their ritual is to drink blood. And in ancient times, uh, the, 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 um, the people, the non-Israelite people believed in drinking the blood of their enemies. So, you know, so that is just a no, no, uh, as far as Yah, Yah is concerned, for the life of the flesh is in the blood. And a lot of times, if those animals had de demonic uh, tendencies or they had demons, then we go eat, the, then uh, people eat the blood, then those demons, because that's the life of the flesh, those demons could very well enter into them. Okay, so we've got to be careful about that and look at verse uh, 12. Therefore, I said unto the children of Yasharal, no soul of you shall eat blood, neither shall any stranger that sojourns among you eat blood. Okay, and verse 13, and whatsoever man there be, of the children of Israel or of the strangers that sojourn among you, a sojourn among you, which hunts and catches any beast or fowl that may be eaten, he shall even pour out the blood thereof and cover it with dust. We are we are not to eat blood, even of the clean animals. Even of the clean animals, we are not to eat blood. It is a satanic and occulted practice. And so Yah separated us from, from the uh, uh, nations around us. Okay, let's move on. Uh, for the life, verse 14, for the life of all flesh, the blood of it is for the life thereof. Therefore, I said unto the children of Yasharon, you shall eat the blood of no manner of flesh, none. 
For the life of all flesh is in the blood thereof. Whosoever eats it shall be cut off. Now, uh, uh, that has a couple of meanings, cut off. It means that they will be put out of the uh, of the family of Yasharal, number one. They're probably going to be stoned. And they will had to, they would have had to die back then. They would be stoned. And another way is that they're going to be sick and cut off. They don't have to be stoned because they, you know, all of this that Yah is telling us is uh, to keep us healthy and help us to live healthy lives. All right, now let's look at verse fifteen. And every soul that eats that which died of itself or that which was torn with beasts, whether it be one of your own country or a stranger, he shall both wash his clothes and bathe himself in water and be unclean until the evening, then shall he be clean. Okay, so evidently this might be uh, the start of diseases or plagues or whatsoever, so he has to wash, take a bath, wash himself uh, and be unclean, stay away from everybody else until the evening. And then at six o'clock, uh, he, he, he's going to be considered clean. Verse 16, but if he wash them not, nor bathe his flesh, then he shall bear his lawlessness. So Yah uh, calls it lawlessness, iniquity, remember? Iniquity is lawlessness. So y'all calls it lawlessness when we don't obey his dietary laws. It is lawlessness. And, and uh, there's a lot of scriptures that talk about iniquity. Uh, and in fact, uh, Isaiah 59 is one of my favorites where uh, he says, Yah's hand is not too short that he cannot save. His ear is not dull that he cannot hear. But your iniquities have separated you from your Elohim. And, uh, and so when we, are, when we are lawless, when we refuse to obey his law, statutes, and commands and ordinances, he, it is considered iniquity in his eyes. In his uh, under in Yah's eyes, it's considered iniquity. So we want to make sure that we are obedient, because he considers uh, us not doing what he has told us to do, because he loves us as iniquity. All right. So here is a picture of something this is a thick steak it looks more like a sirloin uh and you can see on the board the blood that has drained out of that okay so this is a steak and we are not to eat blood we just went over that we are not ever 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 to eat blood so we must make sure our food is thoroughly cooked. And, and one thing that I have noticed is that uh, the, the cows and the beef that they that, that are raised for food, now they'll uh, they will inject them with not only growth hormones, but they will inject them with um, with uh, antibiotics. And okay, they object them with they inject them with antibiotics so that and this is the Gentiles so that they can eat their steaks like and their uh, the uh, their food like this because they've been injected with antibiotics and so they don't cook their food fully when they have beef or steaks or what have you. So this is a no-no, okay? This is a no-no. We should make sure our food is cooked, well done. And the only thing about it, when you go to a restaurant, a lot of them don't know how to cook well done steaks, uh, et cetera. 
Uh, they only know how to cook it rare like this. And uh, and and it's hard to get a good steak. Uh, I would rather have my husband's steak if I do eat steak. I don't do very much eating of steak because it's hard on our systems and especially hard on mine. Okay, just personal note. All right. Leviticus 17 and 22. This is a biggie right here. All of them are biggie. And Yahuwah spoke unto Moses saying, speak unto the children of Yasharel saying, you shall eat no manner of fat. Let me say that again. Speak unto the children of Yasharel saying, you shall eat no manner of fat of ox or of sheep or of goat. So the ox is, is beef. So you don't, we don't need, we don't, we are not to eat that. And a lot of people like fat. You know, they like the fat. I've, I've, I'm, I'm so grateful that I've never liked the fat of any meat because it feels funny in my, it's funny in my mouth. But, um, but we are not to eat fat. Now, I know this just is another thing. Oh, no, another thing we can't have. But we're going to go over what fat does. Uh, verse 24. Hold on a minute. Let me admit another student. Uh, verse 24. Uh, and the fat of the beast that dies of itself and the fat of that which is torn with beast may be used in any other use, but you shall in no wise eat of it. So you can make candles from it or whatever, you know, uh, whatever need you will have for the fat, but not for cons consuming, not for cons uh, consummation in your own body. Verse 25, and whosoever eats the fat of the beast of which men offer an offering made by fire unto Yahweh, even the soul that eats it shall be cut off from his people. And I've already explained that usually they would be stoned if they uh, transgressed his commandments. And, uh, and then uh, it might be a slow walk, but if they continue to eat fat, they're going to get sick and die. So that's another cutting off uh, from the people. But we are not to eat fat from beef or ox, sheep or of goat. Because the disease, if the animal is diseased, if uh, you have a diseased animal, that is where the disease lodges in the fat of that animal. Okay, that's where it lodges. So, um, and so that's what we need to be careful about. Now, I'm just going to uh, do a disclaimer. You're not going to like the, the next four slides. Uh, what I what I'm gonna show you, a uh, next two. Now that looks like a uh, it looks like a steak, and I'm trying to think of what is the name of that steak because uh, it used to be my favorite uh, steak. Uh, I can't think of it. I'm sorry, but um, it is very tender because it's marble. But even when I would eat, huh? Is it a river? River. That's what it is. And that is my favorite steak. If I do eat, it's a ribeye. But I would cut around the fat because I never could. Like I said, I never could stand the texture of fat in my mouth. It doesn't mean that you can't cook it. And then, but then you need to cut away the fat, okay, as best as possible. And by the time you get it off the grill or whatever, the marbling uh, that's inside the lean part is going to be cooked out of it, okay, usually. So it's not a lot to try to, to avoid. 
Okay. Thank you, Monique. I couldn't think of it. All right. Here we go. Uh, well, where am I going here? Here we go. Now, I'm showing you clips of a double note, swine and fat, okay, lard. Now, I grew up on uh, pork, and I remember helping my mother, they call it try lard when my dad will kill hogs, then we took what is on the right side of the screen, which is the fat back, and we cut it up. Uh, and then we have this big uh, iron pot. Uh, and under the iron pot, my mom would um, uh, put bricks and, uh, and then put wood under it and light a fire and then uh, the heat would dry out, would, would draw out the fat and, and then it would start frying it. And we call those cracklings, okay? And we ate, we ate the cracklings as a snack, okay? And uh, then my mom would cook with the lard. She would uh, make uh, biscuits and cornbread. And uh, you couldn't cook cakes with it because it had a, uh, it, it would had a flavor that you didn't want in your cake. Uh, but my mom would cook with lard. And I think she might've made pie crust, I'm not sure. But, uh, and some people still today cook with lard. They season their collards with lard or they'll put some fat back meat in the collard pot. But that's a double no, swine and fat. That's a double no. And we are, and that could be the reason why so many of uh, uh, y'all's chosen uh, fall sick with so many different diseases. Okay, let's move on. And I know that this is going to hurt some feelings. I know, but but uh, my dad, he was a very independent uh, person, uh, self sufficient. I, I I would say, and I remember how he made sausage. And I, if I, if I wanted to, I could make sausage today. I do make my own turkey sausage. I get the uh, the uh, organic turkey, ground turkey, and I make turkey sausage. Uh, but the pork sausage, do you see? My, do you see how it has white in the links? That's fat. That is fat. And uh, my dad would take some the some of the lean uh, meat, uh, and he had this grinder, and he would put some fat in the grinder to to mix up with the lean pork, and then uh, he would he would uh, we would make sausage we would make the the loose fit a uh, loose uh, sausage where we had patties. And then we make sausage like this, where we have fresh link sausage. And then he would take some and hang up in what he called a smokehouse, and he would smoke the sausage. So I believe me, I ate a lot of pork growing up. I ate a lot of pork growing up. Um, and then there's bacon. Okay, so bacon is marble with a lot of fat. Uh, and I got bacon spelled wrong. But anyway, y'all know what it is when you look at it. And bacon was uh, used to be my favorite thing. It used to be my most favorite thing. And especially if it was thick sliced and uh, we put it in the oven and the skin would just crisp up and everything and it would... It used to be my favorite, but I, I decided to obey. 
I know, I know it might not be everybody's testimony, but I gave up bacon and, um, uh, and I gave up sausage, only turkey sausage, you know, so, so, and you, we are not supposed to eat fat. So just wanted you all to know that if we really want to be healthy, we want to make sure we discover, we uh, follow Yah's laws. Okay, where am I? All right. What does animal fat do to your body? And I got fat spill wrong. Well, I was really typing today. A high fat intake is associated with first bullet obesity. Of course, it's already fat. So it doesn't have to do any kind of a, a transforming in your body. It just, just gets on your hips and your and your waist and everywhere else. So it's already fat. So obesity is one of the uh, results of eating a high fat diet. Also type two diabetes. Uh, uh, and so many of our people, our beloved brothers and sisters have type two diabetes. And uh, type two diabetes uh, and then if you have high blood pressure and uh, if you have heart disease and the meds that they give you, uh, they fight each other. They don't complement each other. They fight each other. The, the diabetic medicine will fight your high blood pressure medicine, and which will in, uh, fight any kind of heart medicine that you are taking. They don't cooperate in your body. So you need to know that type two diabetes and, and cancer. And we've already been over that, how pork uh, is, a, uh, uh, is a cause of cancer. Why? Because uh, the swine does not have a mechanism to cool its body off. You know, uh, uh, and we talked about this when we were going over it. But what does what do pigs do when it's hot? Uh, you they they find a mud hole, and or they find somewhere that has water, and they go and and uh, lay in that, uh, lie in that. So they don't have the mechanism for sweat because sweat actually cleanses the impurities out of our bodies when we sweat. But uh, if the pig doesn't have that. All the impurities stay right in that pig. And most of them go in fat in other parts of the, of the pig. So cancer is the, is the cause. Uh, the pork can cause cancer. Believe you me, they have said it in research that pork is, a, is one of the leading causes of cancer. All right. And then coronary heart disease. All of that can be from a high fat diet. Okay. Okay. And now uh, from Nutrifacts.org, animal fat appears to be implicated in a number of other diseases and conditions. Alzheimer's, because animal fat is saturated fat and it clogs up our arteries and, and so forth. So our brain can't get the, uh, the uh, oxygen and the blood flow that it needs. So it causes Alzheimer's and the third bullet, I'll skip down, and dementia because it's saturated and it cl clogs up our, like I said, our blood vessels. Crohn's disease, okay? Erectile dysfunction, that's usually what men suffer. Uh, and uh, you can look that up. I won't waste time uh, talking about that, but. I think yeah, well, they call it ED, so you can find out what that is. Kidney failure, multiple sclerosis, MS, premature aging, and reduced male fertility. Reduced male fertility. All of these have been implicated in, disease, in these diseases and conditions. Okay, so we know, we really, you know, y'all knew what he was saying. He's, he's wisdom. He's all-knowing. He's omniscient. That means all-knowing. He knows everything. He knows what's going to make us sick. 
And he knew back then around the mountain when he gave the law, dietary laws to, to Moses, he knew what would make us sick. He made our bodies. He's not only omniscient, but he's omnipresent and he is um omnipotent or omnipotent, which is all powerful. And so he knows, he knows. So we want, we, you know, I, I, I just plead with you that, uh, it, it, you know, it, it's not, it's, it's not as hard as you think it is to give up these things and teach our children not to eat them. So they will live long and healthy lives. I don't know about you, but I, I really know that you and me, I don't want to have to bury my children. If uh, if Yahusha doesn't come back, then uh, none of us want to bury our children. But if he, uh, Yahusha doesn't come back before I fall asleep, then I want to go fall asleep uh, uh, before my children before my children. That's how I feel, you know. So we need to try to teach our children because there's more uh, adolescent onset diabetes now and heart disease than it's ever been, than it has ever been. Uh, adolescent young people have heart disease and diabetes now and, there's, and young people are obese. So we need to try to teach them Yah's, Yah's dietary laws so that they will be healthy adults and they will bear healthy children um, uh, in their adult lives, okay? Now, uh, WebMD, I went over this in our first uh, part of, of our lesson. Uh, this is what WebMD WebMD says, why seven deadly diseases strikes blacks most, okay? First bullet, several deadly, deadly diseases strike black Americans harder and more often than they do our counterparts, white Americans. Diabetes is 60% more common in black Americans than in white Americans. Blacks are up to two and a half times more likely to suffer a limb amputation and up to 5.6 times more likely to suffer kidney disease than other people with diabetes. And I know uh, my husband being a pastor for all these years, he has funeralized a lot of our brothers and sisters that fell asleep from these diseases. Kidney, uh, kidney stopped working and some good friends of ours lost limbs and uh, so forth. And despite lower tobacco exposure, black men are 50% more likely than white men to get lung cancer, lung cancer. And you don't have to be, uh, you don't have to smoke to get lung cancer, even though smoke will help it along. Smoking will help it along. But you, we have to, uh, you know, it has to sink into us that we were under uh, Deuteronomy 28 curse also. Now, the uh, our white counterparts are under that Deuteronomy 28 curse. Now, uh, once once uh, they are coming under the retribution and the judgment of the Most High now uh, at this time, because it's getting more and more clearer to us. But we were under a curse for, hun curse for hundreds of years because of idolatry, because of them burning their, offering their children as a sacrifice to devils, and because they were worshiping the sun and the moon and the stars and worshiping trees and and uh, all of that, it just angered our father. And that's why Deuteronomy 28 came into play, okay? Now, the next slide, I'm gonna ask the question. Is transgressing y'all's dietary laws a means that the enemy uses to kill us? Think about it. Is this another way because there's already traffic stops and, and police uh, shooting up our, our men and women 
And th- and now it's like our young people in hoods. I heard a, a judge, I, I saw something where a judge say used to the KKK would would kill and hang blacks. But the but now uh, young men in hoodies are doing a better job than the KKK ever did. And so, and so uh, our young men are killing each other. And then you have, um, and then you have, every, it's, it's just about every day that I look at some news feed and it's where a mother, and today I saw, it was a, it was a Hebrew, a mother had stabbed her little uh, six month baby uh, in the in the face and in the chest, and you know that's that's just it looks it seems like this is coming to uh, be an everyday event. This coming to be an everyday event where parents are actually killing their babies, killing their children. This is the enemy, and the enemy also has a scheme for us. Now I can answer that question. What I think. I think it is. I think it is that his his way of of helping us whispering in our ear. You you can go ahead and eat that. Uh, uh, the Lord's not gonna care. You can eat this, or we fool ourselves. This ain't gonna hurt me. I'm just gonna eat this now. This ain't gonna hurt me. We we have that uh, what uh, David King David called a presumptuous sin that we presume that the most high is not going to care. But listen, I'm I'm going to say, I'm going to just read, because I've already read it at the beginning to uh, verse 26. And he said, if you will diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah Elohai come, or the Lord your God, and will do that which is right in his sight, and will give ear to his commandments and keep his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahuwah, Rophaka, the Lord that heals you. Okay? So, uh, so, uh, so this, uh, so this is what we need to heed to. It's up to you. And I am not going to judge you, uh, whatever decision you make. But I can just say that uh, when we make our own decisions, which Yah te- lets us, allows us to do, when we make our own decisions, then we have to deal with the consequences. Thank you so much. Huh? Hello? Oh, I heard somebody. We have to deal with the consequences of those decisions. And, and uh, you know what? Uh, I believe that Yah is a compassionate, loving, kind uh, Elohim. You know, and so when we get these sicknesses, for instance, diabetes, and and uh, heart disease and cancer we want a miracle from the most high but are we doing what we are supposed to do are we eating the things that we are supposed to eat because we have talked about the negative uh consequences of eating those things which he told us not to eat we uh, and then we're so, you know, we're so, um, uh, we're, we, you know, we'll go cry to him, which I would too, you know, cry out to him for healing. But now that we know that these diseases could be waiting for us if we continue to disobey his dietary laws, then, uh, you know, Abba might just allow us to suffer. I'm not saying he will. He is such a good, good father, but he might allow us to suffer. And there are rare instances where where, uh, people are healed miraculously, 
miraculously from these diseases. So I just, I just uh, implore uh, you to, to, you know, look at these uh, videos over again and don't just, don't just put them in uh, on a back burner and just, uh, ha you know, and just presume that Yah is not going to care. He will care because he loves you and he does care. And he has given us the plan, the roadmap to healthy and, and health and wholeness. So we want to make sure that uh, verse 26 resonates in our, in our mind and in our heart. If you diligently hearken to the voice of Yahuwah, Elohai Kim, and will do which is right in his sight and will give ear to his commandments and keep up his, all his statutes, I will put none of these diseases upon you, which I have brought upon the Egyptians. For I am Yahuwah Rofeka, or the Lord that heals you. Okay, so, so, so I just, um, I just uh, encourage you to make wise choices. I know it's not easy that we we get tired of fish and we get tired of chicken. And, and I had said in the new year, I was going to try lamb because my, my father, even though he had all that pork, oh, gobs and gobs of hogs, uh, uh, but he did, uh, he did cook lamb chops for us and he, I liked them. So, um, so um, uh, this is, these are so, I'm gonna, I said I was going to try lamb uh, coming up and I'm, I am going to. Uh, we had it when we went to the Passover down in uh, Bates, uh, Batesville, Mississippi. And it was seasoned. It was really tasty, uh, you know. So, uh, and then I'm gonna end. Then I want questions. I want comments. I remember going to get my nails done back home, and I went. And of course, those are are Orientals. They're usually Vietnamese that do nails. And so, the nail technician that was who was doing my nails, you know, his girlfriend or his wife came in with a little. Uh, English bulldog puppy, and uh, and uh, he said, "You better you better not bring him around here." I know he was kidding, maybe. Uh, he he says, "You you better not bring him around here, or I might eat him." And I look, I said, "You're kidding, right?" And then all of them kind of jumped on me. You know, I I said, uh, "You eat dog?" He said, "Yeah, we eat dog." And, um, and, uh, and the, so one that was kind of behind me and I, you know, I made a grimace and he said, <laughs> so the, the woman that was sitting doing nails behind me, he said, well, y'all eat chitlins. What could I say? And I just said, well, I don't eat chitlins, but, uh, what could I say? I just, I decided to just stay out of any kind of debate of them eating dogs. But they do, they, they, they eat dogs and cats, you know. So, you know, they are not concerned about uh, dietary. That is just what they can find to eat and not starve. So in their, in the, in their countries. So I just want to tell you that, um, yeah. So I just want questions or comments because this is the last lesson on this and we're gonna go into something new. Uh, after New Year's Day. It's, it's tough, sis, it's tough. <laughs> well, I'm not gonna say it is, it, that it's not, you know, but it's, the, it's a decision that we're making for our health. Uh, that's all I can say. It's a, it's a health decision. Do we want to live to see our grandchildren and great-grandchildren and to be able to really enjoy them and not be bedridden 
and hooked up to a whole lot of uh, machines and stuff, you know, uh, that's what that's what I'm thinking about. I want to live all of the days that are written in my book that Yahuwah wrote in my book that has Deborah on it. Um, but I want to have a quality life. I do. I want to be able to to go where I want to go and walk where I want to walk and all of that. And I don't want to be debilitated. That that's how I think about it. And I'll never forget my son when he, when he, I don't know how we got on the conversation, when he got his degree in nutrition, he says you, he says you uh, eat to live and not live to eat. So that, uh, that never left me. Okay. How about somebody else? Just a comment. Uh, if chicken is good or uh, the Chinese people picked it 30 different ways. So maybe we won't get tired of it so quick. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> that's right. Well, there are so many recipes for, for chicken, you know, and I guess the thought of it, but you know, we all love fried chicken and, and uh, baked chicken, but there are other ways. You're right, Brother Leo. There are other ways to cook chicken. And, uh, and so we got to be creative, you know, find different, uh, different ways to, to fix it. You know, you have baked chicken, then you're going to have, have it fried. Then you're going to have it uh, barbecued or grilled or smoked or whatever. And you're going to have it stewed with, with pastry. That's, that's from my state and my hometown. We have chicken and pastry, you know. And uh, you can have chicken salad or, oh, wow. I don't even know. <laughs> but, you know, we're going to have to be creative. We are. We are. Um, you know, we are at a, we live in a society, a culture now where we have so much food that, uh, you know, we, we, we kind of get tired of one thing or another. But back then, that wasn't the case back then, especially on the Mount, uh, at Mount Sinai, they didn't have all, all, all that, uh, uh, all that means to, to choose. They did have quails and they did have birds, but people don't eat birds like they used to. I remember growing up eating birds. You know, my mom loved birds. Whatever my brothers would go kill with a BB gun, and bring it home, you know, she would, she would uh, cook it, you know, so she loved to eat birds. Yeah. Okay. Anybody else? Anybody else find it hard? I'm sure you all do. But you know what? And I'm not trying to get deep on you or whatever. You can always pray for strength. You can always pray that Yah will give you strength because he made these laws and he wants you to follow them and be healthy. You know, think of it as think, I always look at the glass half full. You will have a better outlook on life. You know, I was, who was I talking to? I think it was, was Monique. I was talking to, um, it was somebody I was talking to on the phone today. But anyway, uh, don't, don't complain about what you don't have or can't have, but look at what you can have. And that was Adam and Eve's problem. Uh, you know, the devil told them what they couldn't have when they had all those trees in the garden but they couldn't eat off of uh, two of them, the tree of life and the tr tree of life. I know they couldn't eat off the tree of life and the tree of knowledge. They couldn't eat off of that. And so the devil harped on that. Just read Genesis, in Genesis three. The devil harped on what they couldn't eat. All those different fruit trees and that, don't we, don't we enjoy eating delicious fruit? Uh, all those trees in the garden that they could eat, 
and and they let him or she let him talk her into eating of the tree of knowledge and then she gave some to her husband and so they were thrown out of the garden so they wouldn't eat of the tree of life and live forever in that sinful fallen state yeah but look at always look at the glass half full i, I always talk to people to, to let them know, look at the glass half full and never half empty. It's the same amount of water or milk or juice or whatever that you have in the glass, but it's how your perspective, how are you looking at it? Are you looking at it uh, half full or are you looking at it half empty? And you're worried about the other half that, that is gone. So that's what I'm saying. That's what I'm saying. Okay. Anybody else? Allie? Jasmine? Okay. My, my favorite part of the steak is the fat when you cook it. Oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Okay. But I understand what you're saying. Yeah. Yeah. Well, it, you know, when you cook it, you know, you don't have to get in there and just trim all the fat, but when you eat it, trim away the fat and put it to the side and don't eat it, okay? Because because it's got, the fat is where all of the uh, antibiotics are stored and diseases are stored, the fat of an animal. That's where that, the, that they go, okay? Okay, who, who else? Allie, hi, Allie. Hey, how you doing? Fine, how are you? Good, I don't have no comment, I'm just listening. <laughs> <laughs> it's really hard to swallow, huh? <laughs> <laughs> I was talking to one of my uh, friends back home and uh, she was telling me what she was cooking Sunday, you know, and... Um, and uh, she was she named the things that she was fixing, and she said, and "Of course, you know I had to have me some chitlin." And then she asked me, uh, uh, "Did I cook chitlins?" I said, "No, no, 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 no." Uh, and she asked me, "Did my husband uh, like them?" I said, "He used to eat them, but he stopped because he know I guess he know I wasn't gonna cook them and smell up my house, you know." But um, yeah, I, I I I think I've told all of you my chitlin growing up chitlin story. So uh, chitlins are one part of the 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 hog that I never never ate. Mm -mm. Nope. Anybody else? Any comments or questions? So this is our last lesson on dietary laws. There is one uh, in proverb you can uh, look uh, look it up about honey. I guess in that, that is supposed to say we are not supposed to eat, overeat an abundance of sugar. Honey is not, doesn't have sugar in it, but it has a, it is a sweetener, but it says something about taking a knife to the throat if you sit down and you eat, eat too much honey, but you can look that up. And we all know that we don't need to eat a lot of uh, sugar, a lot of sweets or whatever. Yeah. Okay. Um, any questions? Okay. All right. Then we're just going to pray and we're going to, uh, speak the blessing over you. Father, we thank you for loving us. We thank you that you have laid out, uh, the things that we, that are you can, that you consider as food and the things that you consider as an abomination. And Father, we just ask that you would strengthen us to, to change the things that we have been raised on and we have been taught was food. And Father, so that we can eat only those things that you consider, to, consider as food and have healthy bodies and avoid all these debilitating sicknesses and uh, crippling diseases that 
come with the things that you have told us not to eat. Help us to make wise decisions, decisions that will please you, Father, in our eating, in our selection of those things that we put in our mouths and ingest. We thank you for it. We love you for laws that will keep us healthy. We praise you. We worship you and help us to be obedient in Yahushua's mighty, mighty name. And it is so. Hallelujah. All right. And may Yahuwah bless you and keep you. May Yahuwah make his face to shine upon you. Be gracious unto you and lift up his countenance upon you and grant you his shalom. Go with the shalom of the most high. And also when we, I, I want to tell you, I meant to tell you, when we were, when we um, still, <coughs> excuse me, still continue to eat what is not considered food. <clears throat> and then we say blessings over it. That is not going to help. We wish it would, right? <clears throat> I wish it would. Uh, one of my favorites is <clears throat> German chocolate cake. I wish I can get me a big hunk like this and then gra say grace, but that is not going to negate the harm that it's going to do to my body. So love you all and go with the shalom of the most high. And I am out unless y'all want to chat. I'm out. Start recording.